So now we're going to look at some of the ways that R can trip you up. First of all, I'll set my working directory. And then I'm going to create some data. So that just contains some numbers, 1 to 5 and then 9 to 23. And I want to have a look at that. So I could type in some data, all as one word, which will fail. Because now I was looking for an object called some data, just as a single word, and not some dot data, which is what it's actually called. R is also case sensitive, so if I use some dot and then capital D, again that will fail. To see the values, I have to type it in exactly as it was originally created, and then it will show me the values that I'm after. Now I'm going to try and read in a data file and deliberately fail as well. First of all, I'm going to change my working directory to an incorrect place. So all that command does is it changes the working directory to one directory above where I was originally. First attempt at reading the data file in. And it tells me object small data set dot csv not found. So we have a quick look. We've got all the capitals in the right places. The reason it hasn't worked is that it's a file name, not an object within R. And we need our file names in quotes, either single quotes or double quotes. So we try again. Still fails. Cannot open file, no such file or directory. So the first thing is to check we're actually in the right directory. So we do a get wd. We see that we're not. So we change to the correct directory. Then we list the files. Now we can see the file that we're after. So this time when we try and read it in, it will work. We sometimes get a problem with a function because we forget to put the brackets on. If I try and run ls without the brackets, it produces this, which looks really weird. What it's actually done there is it's dumped the code of the ls function to the screen. So rather than run it, it's displayed the code behind it. So what we actually wanted to do was ls and the brackets, which shows us the data objects that we're after. Another way that functions can catch us out is if we forget to close the brackets. So I'm going to get the mean value of that data that we read in, sum.data. Doesn't give me the answer, which I, I was expecting an answer, an average. Thing to note there is that the prompt has changed. It's changed from the greater than sign to a plus. That's what R displays when it thinks you're entering something over a number of different lines. But if I'm just sitting there scratching my head thinking, why didn't it give me the average? I might try to list the objects to see if it's actually there or not. Press enter and then I get my error message. Because basically I've added some text into a function that, that was expecting numbers. So it's given me an error message. We also get that um, multiple line effect in, it, in different circumstances as well. So if I'm doing the scan function, I enter some numbers, press enter. I haven't got a plus sign this time, but I do have a number because it's still expecting more values. So if I don't notice that and carry on typing, doesn't list the objects which is what I was expecting I've asked it to list because again it's still waiting for um, more data to be entered what I need to do there to get out of the scan function is to tap the enter key at which point it, it complains about what I've fed it we also get a similar thing if we're using the C function to join um, values together So 
So again, I've forgotten the closing bracket. Press Enter. Carry on working, expecting it to do something differently. And I get an error because it didn't finish entering the information. So in summary, that's some of the ways that R can trip you up if you're not careful. Read the error messages that it gives you. Watch your prompts. Make sure you've finished entering commands before you've moved on to the next one. If it complains about objects not found, it's normally a naming issue. But it may be worthwhile checking your working directory and make, making sure that you're in the correct one. And if you're still having problems, it's worth checking the help system or doing a, a, an internet search on the actual text of the error message itself.